Hi, I'm Paul Lofford and uh, welcome to my presentation on the installation and workings of the microblog server that we use with JS8 Core. Okay, so the things we're going to look at, um, we're just briefly going to touch on the two types of client. I'm sure the people, those of you who are watching this probably are already aware, but we'll just recap on that. Um, we'll look at the MB server program and its requirements um, in terms of the platform to run it on, etc. Um, how do you download and install it? How does it work? And um, this particular issue of uh, JS8 call settings, there, there aren't many that you have to change actually, there's only a couple. But there are a couple of JS8 call settings to be changed and some matching MB server settings. And finally, how do we get news and report bugs? And then I'll summarize everything uh, right at the end. Okay, so moving straight on the clients. So we're gonna go and start with JS8 Call as a client. You can just use JS8 Call on its own as a client. Um, all you have to do is you put the micro blog commands into the message box um, and the commands have to be in a, a specific format and you send them off via JS8 call to the server and then the server responds with uh, the answer to the, um, the query or, or, you know, with the post information. Alternatively, you can use the MB client program. Um, that brings some benefits at this time and the major benefit is caching. So uh, we've got one type of caching where um, if you say get a microblog post and then, then later on you go to get that same post again, rather than send to the server to get the data, it will just get it out of the cache and immediately um, display it in this area here in the um, message window or pane. Um, so that's the first, the first type of caching. The second type of caching is called promiscuous caching. And what that does is as uh, your MB client sees other conversations going on with other stations, it caches the information. So for example, if someone else does a get for post number 28, and then later I do a get for post number 28, I won't bother to go to the server, I'll just get it straight out of the cache. So this is all in an effort to speed up the response time and cut the amount of traffic going to the server. As time goes on, there'll be further features in the um, client, but at this time it's caching is the main thing. So assuming we don't get the data from the cache, um, it's very much the same type of operation. We send a request to the server and we get a response back. So now, now let's look at the server requirements. It's written in Python. Um, the server is developed on Windows, but it should run on any operating system that supports Python and also supports JS8 Call, obviously. So it requires Python 3.9 or later. Uh, I think at the time of recording this, the current release of Python is 3.11, I think. Um, you need JS8 call version two. Frankly, I've never run version one. I don't even know what it looks like. So uh, it may work with version one. I've got no idea, but it's been developed on JS8 call version two. And obviously you need a JS8 call supported radio. Now, um, I, I, I have one of, one of the radios I use is a Elecraft KX3 and it doesn't have a direct USB link for the audio. And so I also have a signal link box. Um, so, you know, if you can get, if you can get JS8 Core, and this is the, this is the absolute sort of litmus test. If JS8 Core works for you, you're good to go. You don't need anything further than that, other than, you know, Python 3.9 and the program. So installing MB server, I'm going to show you this rather than just do this on slides. So let's, um, we need... 
So in your browser, uh, what you want to do is uh, go to GitHub and you need my repositories. So uh, if you put in Paul Offord and if you just do that, that should take you to the right place. And you can see we've got the client software and the server software. So we're interested in the server at this time. So we click on that. And uh, then you can see here we've got code and we've got this, this green button. So the way there are two ways of doing it. If you're familiar with Git, you can just clone uh, this repository and um, then, you know, pull it every time, do a git pull every time you want to do an update. Um, if you don't understand what I just said, then git, uh, git is probably not what you want to use, but you don't have to worry about that because the only thing you, you need is uh, to download this zip file. So we just download the zip file and, um, and then we un unzip this into uh, whichever directory you want to put it in. So just uh, unzip this, put it in a directory, and uh, that's where you will execute the Python code from. The main starting uh, module is MB server. We'll look at this in a second, what we actually need to execute. Um, the other thing is there is a posts directory, which has some sample posts in it. You don't have to install those. Um, you need to either copy them to another place in the directory or you need to change a setting. And again, we'll look at that. But basically, and I'm, I'm rambling on a bit here, the main thing is just download the zip file and unpack it into the directory, any directory you want. Okay, not particularly earth shattering stuff. Um, how does it work? So the basic operation is that uh, the um, you, you run the server from, from the command line. So you start a command box and you put in python mbserver.py. Um, you have to be in the directory with the code, obviously, or you need to put a path um, in front of this mbserver.py. But um, yeah, change into the directory where you're running the code and then just run it in this way. The code will automatically pull the call sign, the current frequency and the current offset from JS8 call. You don't need to hard code anything into the server to do that. To stop the server, you just use control C. You may have to press it a couple of times. You may have to do control C, control C, but, but basically that's how you stop the server. There's no other sort of clever way of doing it. The post directory, which is the directory that contains all the posts that you want to serve up from your server, um, the location of that directory is set by a variable called posts underscore dir, post directory, in settings.py. And, and we'll look at the settings.py file a little later. The posts are in simple text files and you can create those with your your favorite editor. They must have a file name that follows this format, post ID, ISO date, and then title. And you can see that's how they are here. ISO date, just to, just to make you aware, is year, four digit year, month, day, with a hyphen between all of those. Um, so we need, the, uh, we need that format of file. It needs to be a .txt file. Um, and past that, um, you just put any text in it that you want to serve up. Bearing in mind, there is one, the only thing to bear in mind is that JS8 call has a restricted uh, character set. So putting in characters into the file that are perhaps, you know, like some of those funny graphical sort of, you know, funny lines and right angles and things like that, that's not going to work. And the other thing is that um, it, that JS8 call delivers everything in uppercase. It's a bit like Telex, I suppose, um, if you remember that far back. Um, so everything's in uppercase and a very restricted character set. Now past that, the operation of it is very simple. 
Um, the request comes in across, you know, over the, over the airwaves through your radio. And at this point, it's, it's JS8 call data encoded onto upper sideband. JS8 call does its thing, decoding everything and produces a request message, which gets pushed through into uh, the microblog server. Now pushed through, I, I, as this is about the operation of the server, I should explain, it doesn't actually get pushed through. What happens is the microblog server uh, poll, basically polls the API uh, looking for new messages. So uh, the microblog server is repeatedly sending requests across the API into JS8 call uh, saying, do you have any messages for me? Do you have any messages for me? So it works in that way. Um, and then when there is a message there, that gets transferred into the microblog server. The server will undoubtedly have to reference the post directory, um, either to look up listing information or to get a post and get the content of that post. That then gets returned back and then the path back is as you would expect. Okay, so that's the that's the very simple way it works. And the server doesn't do much more than what you see there. The only other thing it does is it does occasional announcements, which uh, we'll talk about later. So this is the structure of the software. Um, not particularly complicated as you, you can see. So there is a core module um, that has the, uh, the routines to the functions to actually process the requests. Three main ones, process a list request, process an extended list request and process a, a post get request. Um, so uh, just those three. There is also an announcement um, um, process, you know, function in and the announcement runs on a timer. The only announcement that the software does is simply the MB announcement, which uh, announces the availability of the microblog, the latest post number and the latest post date. So uh, that's running, as I said, on a timer um, and you can change the setting, uh, you know, the frequency of the announcements through the settings um, file. And we'll look at that again later. Okay, so a request comes in from the client. If it's coming from the client, it goes straight into the API, um, application program interface. This isn't the JS8 call API. Okay, just to be clear, this is the um, micro blog server API. And then gets pushed into server core, gets processed, and then the response goes back down that path. If we get a request from JS8 call as a client, so we're not running the MB client, we're just running JS8 call native, um, it goes into this command line interface. And all that does is translates the command into API format and then pushes it into the API in the same way as it would do if it was coming directly from the client. And then uh, that gets processed and you know similar path back. Alongside all of this, we have a logging module um, that just produces the log information that you will see in, you know, when you run it in the command line, you'll see it starts to produce some log information. You can change the logging levels. We'll look at that again in a second. So in terms of the operation of the API, um, it's all pretty much based around this particular, you could call it a table. In Python terms, it's a list of dictionary entries. So let me explain how the API works. As the request comes in, um, we try and match the request to a regular expression pattern. So regular expressions are just ways of trying to do pattern matches. And so here we're trying to match to an expression of L and then tilde. This is a tilde character. Um, this uh, caret character at the beginning just means that it should be at the start of the um, string. So we're going to the very start of the string that we're passing in to the API and um, we're doing a match for L at the start followed by tilde. 
And if we get a match, then what we're going to do is we're going to call the process called process MB list. Um, then we have a couple of parameters. The list command can list just one, um, one post. It can list posts later than a greater than a certain post ID. It can list posts later than a certain date. So to accommodate all of that, this will either say equals greater than or tail. In fact, it says EQ, GT or tail. And uh, then you, you have to say what you're going to what you're going to use as the criteria. Is it a post ID or is it a date? So in the by field, you'll either have um, ID or date. We, we'll, we can have a look at this file in a second that contains this. But anyway, you can see it's a fairly simple um, bit of code. It, it, in fact, it's quite short. I, I modified it quite a lot, having realized that this using uh, regular expressions in this way was a great way to achieve what we needed to uh, achieve. So we've got one there for the list, one there for uh, an extended list and one for a get. And you can see this is a get. And then this uh, indicates that we're going to pass in um, an integer number um, to uh, give us the uh, yeah give us the ID that we need. Okay, fairly simple stuff. In terms of the content of the MB server file, um, it's pretty much what you ex would expect. It's got MB server, which is the module you run. You know Python MB server .py. You've got a couple of modules, the API and the CLI. You've got uh, the logging module. All of those you saw on the previous diagram. Uh, you've got readme file, which has got some useful notes in it. The version file is just, just has the version number in it. Uh, the reason for introducing this is it means that every time we make a modification, we want to change the version number. And the, the, this value used to sit in the settings file. But the trouble with that is that then it appears that every time you make a modification to any file, the server settings file always gets changed. And we didn't really want that. So the version um, file just gives us a version number. The posts directory contains the sample post that you downloaded that I showed you in the zip. It's not the default posts directory setting. So these are just samples. Um, this is a bit of um, maybe my, uh, I, don't, I suppose my corporate IT upbringing, but I, I don't like put, putting variable data into a directory that contains code. Um, you'd normally put it somewhere else. Um, but anyway, you, you can set the um, setting in server settings.py to actually point to this post directory if you want to, or you can set the um, server set, uh, the value somewhere else. So that is an important note. So if you just fire this up uh, without having copied the posts into another area, what you'll find is you won't have any posts to serve up. Uh, what's more, if you don't have the directory, it'll actually throw an exception when it starts the program. We'll look at, we'll look at settings in a minute. Okay, and the other thing is, test underscore server dot py. These are what are known as unit tests. So this is just a way of testing the server after code changes have been made. And what it does is it exercises all the functions of the server and checks that they all still work after you've made a change. Uh, a friend of mine and ex-colleague Barry, <laughs> I, he really used to bend my ear on um, testing, that you write the tests first and then you write the codes. Uh, Test-driven development is uh, the term he, he always coined. And um, yeah, I realized way too late that he was completely right. Um, yeah, so that's what we do with the tests, uh, the test server file. So let's move on to the settings. And we're going to start with the JS8 call settings. So pull up the settings and go to general and then networking and auto reply. And in there, you need to disable the idle timeout. 
Now it's a bit weird because disable doesn't seem to be actually an option as you scroll up and down with these little scroll things. What you have to do is set the value to zero. So just remember to set that value to zero, that will disable it, click on OK and that will save the value. The second thing you have to change is under the reporting tab and then it's this area here, TCP server and you need to enable uh, the, over there you see the two check boxes on the right, enable TP, TCP server API, accept TCP requests. Those other values are the default values. You can leave it all to default. And again, click on OK to save that. Now onto the server settings. I'm not gonna slog my way through every setting here. Until you get into this deeper and you want to start to tweak things, pretty much everything in here can be left as is. Um, if you happen to have changed the TCP port number for JS8 call, which is this port number just here, 2442, if you've changed it in the JS8 call settings, you'll need to match it in here. Similarly, if you happen to be running JS8 call on another um, computer or another in another virtual machine, let's say, you'll need to change the IP address. But quite honestly, if you're working at that level, you probably don't need me to tell you this. <laughs> um, the other thing is the message terminator. Uh, it's come out as a square blob there. This is the default one, which is a little diamond shape. But my editor, um, which was Notepad++ in this case, shows it as a square. Uh, don't get too hung up on that, but just leave that to default. Capabilities, that's coming in, fu in future use. And here we've got that announcement thing. So announcing the availability of the microblog server, you can switch it on or off. It's switched on by default. And the timer is that it will give an announcement when it first starts up and then an announcement every 60 minutes afterwards. Now this is where we're all going to be in sort of a bit of an experimental stage. It could be that 60, 60 minutes is way too long. Um, so we may have to start to tweak that value. Current login level, level one, it gives you the, you'll see the requests coming in from the clients and the responses going out. And there's a bit of additional stuff, but it's, you know, it's uh, not too, verbose and it does at least give you an indication of what's going on. Now this is the value that you are going to need to change post directory. You Chances are you haven't got a, uh, a directory development microblog posts. You're either going to create that um, directory or you're going to um, change this value to point to where you want your posts to be uh, kept. Those are those post text files, you know, those text files that actually contain the post data. Um, you can use forward slashes in here, even in Windows. So you can either use double backslash or forward slash. You can also uh, use, um, you know, forward slashes if you're running on a Linux or a Mac OS um, host. List limit. When you do a listing like a tail, uh, the maximum number of uh, items that will be sent back in the list is five by default. Again, this is an area we're probably going to end up experimenting with. Uh, we've got a trade-off. Obviously, it would be nice if we did a complete listing of everything we wanted, but we have to bear in mind that even sending um, five a list of five items over JS8 call running in normal mode, I think it takes about two minutes. So, you know, there's there's a bit of a trade-off here. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about this replace thing. This was a, this was really used to experiment with a formatting issue that we were having with uh, JS8 call and debug, leave that as false. That's just when you're using the, um, the unit test uh, uh, code to exercise the, um, the server after code changes. Okay. Now here, I've given a list of all of the details uh, of what we're doing. Uh, blog name, if you say blog name is none, it defaults to the current call sign. 
you can change the name of your blog, even if you're say running like on my user ID is, um, or my call sign is um, Mike Zero Papa, uh, Papa X-Ray Oscar. I could change the blog name to UK News. This is really for future use when we start to um, introduce uh, this, this sort of split between blog names and uh, station names and, and call signs. Uh, and then down here, as I said, the only thing you really want to get involved in changing is this post directory. I try to uh, give, you know, post updates about the development of MB server to the Facebook group and to the mailing list. And actually in this case, this is, uh, you know, me sending out an email relating to the microblog client. But uh, yeah, Facebook group and the mailing list. Um, I have to say, I've not really asked anybody if this is okay. And if you're watching this and you don't think this is the way to do, you know, to keep people appraised of the development of this software, um, I'm happy to accept other suggestions or, um, you know, somebody telling me stop doing it because <laughs> I've sort of, I've commandeered the Facebook group a bit um, with, uh, you know, posting information about this. And, and it's not strictly JS8 call, is it? It's, a, it's an application running on top of it. So maybe that's not the best place to, to uh, post it. But I think maybe if the, as we go further into the development of this and hopefully we get uh, a, a faster um, rate of changes, um, you know, cadence of changes and more people involved, then maybe we will need to split it off into a separate Facebook group. Um, but at this stage, it's a pretty f low frequency of posts that I'm putting in there. So hopefully that's acceptable. If you've got issues, if you found a problem, um, you can just report it to me using the Facebook group or the mailing list. Um, alternatively, if you've got a GitHub log login, you can directly raise an issue. Um, and if you've got a GitHub um, login, I assume you know how to raise issues. Um, so please feel free to do that. And some people have done that already. Um, so uh, that's great because it saves me a lot of work. <laughs> um, but as usual, usual uh, rules about raising the issue. Can you please put in the uh, repro steps, you know, the, the steps you take to reproduce the problem and any information about the platform you're running on? Um, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, how you um, you know, the guidelines on raising issues like this or bug reports. Okay, I think I've rambled on for long enough. So we've seen that um, the server will support uh, JS8 call as a client and the microblog client um, software. Uh, it requires 3.9. Um, there are no additional libraries needed. I have been tempted to solve certain issues as I have seen certain suggestions. I'll oh, just install this library. I've tried to avoid all of that. So you just need Python 3.9. You shouldn't have to install any additional um, packages on top. Um, I've tried to write it in a modular fashion. If I'm honest, I could do more. For one thing, I think the comms driver should be split out in the same way as I've done with the client, um, because that way, in theory, you could use other um, transport mechanisms other than JS8 call and that could be attractive so yeah I think I should should really um, split it out a bit more but basically you know that CLI API core server and then the logging module that is fairly modular um, the posts are simple text files write them with your favorite editor notepad notepad plus plus Nano, in, you know, if you're if you're working with uh, with Linux or whatever, um, or Vi, <laughs> Vi for that matter. Um, default settings will meet most of your needs. You just need to make those uh, two changes in the JS8 call settings, which are um, the uh, idle timeout setting, disable it, and enable the TCP server um, so that um, it will actually activate the um, JS8 call API. 
and you must set the post direct uh, post uh, var variable um, for MB server. Other than that, you can leave all the other settings to default. Um, report, uh, watch out for news and report bugs through Facebook or JSA call mailing list. Um, if you can, um, then report bugs directly using issues in GitHub. I hope that information helps you run the server and understand how it works. Um, please feel free to uh, post, you know, on the Facebook group or via, via the mailing list if you have questions. And thanks very much for watching.